Hi everyone, welcome to Mostly Math. Today I will be deriving an elementary result, which I often use on this channel and is often not shown in elementary calculus courses. In particular, I will be showing that the integral over an odd function over a symmetric domain is equal to zero, where I will indicate exactly what I mean by these words in a moment. But basically, the geometric interpretation is if you have an odd function, like y equals x, for example, and you look at the area, let's say minus a to a, you're going to have the areas be equal and opposite, so when you add them together, there is zero. That's basically what this elementary theorem is going to say, and this is an example where you can use it for. Um, the theorem will tell you that you know, minus a to a, but to x of x is equal to zero, of course. Technically, this only holds for finite a, but in applications in physics, you will oftentimes use it for infinite a as well, minus infinity to infinity, but to x of x equal to zero. This is actually not what we're going to be showing today, but it's plausible why it will be true, since if you just expand the limits a, as, as a goes from minus infinity to infinity, it's possible that at every point you add them together, they'll be zero. But this actually requires you to use the principal value um, definition of the integral, which, which is slightly different from what we'll be showing today. But let's proceed. Okay, I want to show that the integral of an odd function is zero over a symmetric domain. So first, let f be odd, or this tells us that f of minus x is equal to minus f of x, of course. This is the definition of odd functions. This holds for functions like x, x cubed, sine x, etc. Many functions are odd. And we are going to look at the integral of the odd function. So we're going to let f of x be defined as the integral from 0 to x with respect to some other variable x prime of the original function of the new variable. And the first step of the proof is to show that this function is actually even. So all we have to do is plug x goes to minus x in our definition here and see what we get. Okay, so then f of minus x is now equal to the integral from 0 to minus x dx prime of f of x prime. And now we just do a change of variables in the integral. We're going to let x prime go to minus x prime. And this, of course, tells us that x goes to um, that minus x goes to x, of course, and the dx prime is similarly transformed. So the integral becomes, integral from 0 to x, we have a minus dx prime here, and then we have f of minus x prime. Well, this can just be written as d minus x prime, since the minus sign can be distributed. And there we have the original function here, which we would make an implicit change of variables. x prime goes to minus x prime again, going back. But we can simply recognize this as f of x. So this tells us that f is even So we can now use this to evaluate the integral over this metric domain. We are going to consider integral from minus a to a with respect to x of f of x, which we know from the fundamental theorem of calculus is just the antiderivative of this function evaluated at the endpoints and subtracted. And we already know this property about the antiderivative. We have defined the antiderivative here, so we'll just plug it in here. This is f of a minus f of minus a. And now we can use the fact that we just showed. We showed that the antiderivative is actually even. 
So this is just f of a, of course. So the whole thing is equal to zero. And now we can celebrate by applying it to the simple examples. We know that, of course, integral to x of x is odd, zero. And it's equal to this integral as well. If we had a x cubed, or actually any x to the 2n plus 1 power, and it's equal to the integral from minus a to a of sine x as well. Doesn't matter what a is, it doesn't have to be a multiple of pi, it can be minus one to one, still going to be zero. So this is actually a very powerful theorem since odd functions over symmetric domains do come up pretty frequently when you are evaluating integrals. I just think it's important to see why it's true since even though it is geometrically obvious, it's important that you be able to prove it as well. And the proof is actually not that hard. It's something that's pretty easy to remember. All you have to do is look at the antiderivative, show it's even by doing a change of variables. Easy peasy. If you like this and want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.